How are you doing? Here we are again. We are really right up on the test. It is November 8th. That is a Wednesday. We have about two weeks and three days at the time of this filming. Before I get to this video called What Can I Do? I want to get to some quick announcements. Uh, some of you know about my small notebook class. I had it last year. About 30 people attended it. Um, I'm going to be opening up again this year. This for the first time ever, there'll be an international a class time that's more conducive for the international students. That one will be Sunday, November 5th, 12 noon to 3 p.m. Beijing time. You don't have to be in Beijing. You can be anywhere in that part of the world. Uh, locally, the Pacific time where I live, it's going to be Saturday, 9 p.m. to midnight. So yes, I am staying up till midnight to offer that class. These classes are not free. I apologize again in advance. I know I do offer these videos for free to help you, but this is my career. I, I teach AMC content full time, more than 40 hours a week. And so yeah, this is how I pay the bills and turn these lights on and stuff like that. So uh, the other classes, you can sign up for these either through my channel email it's on the about page. You just click about on my channel. I don't know how you do it. Somewhere over there, there's a button about. You'll see an email at the bottom. You can contact me there. You can also reach me through my website and sign up for the class there as well. Um, all times are Pacific. So for the following times, this is the US, Canada, Western Hemisphere time slots, Sunday, October 27th. It'll be two classes separated. I'm not going to include the AMC 12 topics, not all of them at least, uh, like skipping logs and complex number stuff for the AMC 10 class. The AMC 12 will get both of those things. They're going to be three hours long. It takes about that much time to go through what I've added to my small notebook. If you don't know what the small notebook is, I'll include a, include a link in the description called Small Notebook Justified and Explained. As an example of the kinds of things that will be in there, it's going to be a bunch of key facts, concepts, and things like that. Here is a page of mine that you can see. Uh, perfect squares, the first one on there says, perfect squares have an odd number of positive divisors. These little facts like that, they're the only kinds that do, by the way. All the other ones do not have an odd number of positive divisors. And we might go over why that is, and I will establish it in the class, along with about 120 other concepts. These are not going to be y equals mx plus b. What's the slope? Uh, slope of perpendicular lines is negative reciprocals. That stuff is kind of elementary if you're taking this test. I'm not using any of that kind of material. These are going to be somewhat advanced concepts, techniques, and things like that. The ideal target range is people who are trying to get Amy qualified this year. And so if you're within that range of say last year you were in the 70s plus, and this year you're being a little bit closer, 90s plus, 100s plus, or you came within one question in years past, this course is more targeted towards those kinds of individuals. And so it's going to be AMC 10. It'll be 10.30 a.m., again, Pacific time, until 1.30 p.m. There will be a five to 10 minute break in the middle. There'll be an AMC 12 class following that a half hour later, 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. Um, it'll be basically a three hour lecture straight. I'm just gonna go through. I will say the topic, I will explain a potential usage of it, and we'll move on to the next one, and we'll just go through all of them as quickly as we can. The other one will be Sunday, November 5th. This is three days before the test. It's going to be the AMC 12. We'll switch spots with the AMC 10. So you'll get the AMC 12 at 10.30 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. and the AMC 10 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. I possibly might have one on November 12th. Last year, a whole bunch of people messaged me between the A and the B and asked if I would do it one more time, and I did. Uh, the other things I wanted to announce, there is a new AMC prep book. It's free. The individual who made it, I do know personally, Ritvik Rustagis. It's going to be on my website. You just go to the links. You might already be aware of Sohil Rathi's book that he made for AMC prep students. It's wonderful as well, but this one just came out. He spent hundreds of hours trying to do this just to help you be able to prepare for the AMCs. A bunch of concepts, it's additional study material, and we've got about 17 days right now until the test. Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention, the MAA Fireside Chat. This is the third annual Fireside Chat that they've offered. It's a panel of six MAA AMC Olympians. They are students, but they've all made it to MOP or beyond. 
Uh, MOP is the Math Olympiad Summer Program. So they're well qualified to speak. The individual that mentioned it to me is in my Discord server for a couple years now. His name is Isaac and he's a wonderful individual as well. So they're offering this chat. It's from 6 to 7 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, Friday, this coming Friday, October 27th. Uh, they're gonna be talking about all things math co competitions, experiences, myths, and advice. There's an AOPS thread. I will throw it in the description of this video. Uh, don't forget to check out this book, and if you're interested in the class, reach out. With no further ado, Let's get to what can I do? Hey, how are you doing? So I wanted to get out a few of these kind of strategies and tactics videos as we approach the test. Um, I decided to make one on a concept I like to call, what can I do? So many times when we're approaching a question, we look at it and we think, oh, what am I supposed to do? And a lot of times that is a great question because if you have instincts and inferences you've built up from solving many thousands of problems or hundreds of problems at least, you might have an idea about how you should approach certain problems. But other times, and usually several times during a test, you're not going to know what you're supposed to do. And that's exactly when you should be asking, what can I do? And so we get bogged down sometimes by thinking about if I take this action, how is it going to benefit and what we should be doing is just kind of seeing what that action looks like after we take it. I wanna illustrate this by using a problem I've solved before, and I wanna illustrate it with problem number five from the 2017 AMC 10A. And so it says the sum of two non-zero real numbers, we know what they are, we don't. If we don't know what they are, let's put some variables in. So we have A plus B is, is right here, that's equals, four times their product, product is the result of multiplication. So we write this down and we look at it and we say, okay, what could I do with this? And maybe you can do something. In fact, it looks a lot like Simon's favorite factoring trick. If you don't know what that is, uh, it's from AOPS community, an individual within it. It was his favorite factoring trick. He appeared in a book, uh, Intro to Algebra as well mentions his name, and it basically works within this situation where you have the sum of two variables, they may have coefficients, and you also have a product of, variable, product of variables, but it also has an additional restriction, and that is the variables must be integers. Otherwise, it won't be useful. So we don't wanna use that here, but you might've thought of it if you looked at this question before, but instead let's go to the question here. What is the sum? of the reciprocals of the two numbers. Again, we've called the two numbers A and B, so their reciprocals are one over A and one over B, and their sum is this. And we say, man, I mean, if only I knew what A and B was, then I guess I could add those, but I don't. Maybe I should work with this again. And so trying to guess the numbers here isn't probably going to be fruitful or beneficial because we have no idea if they're fractions or, or uh, rational or irrational, et cetera. And so instead, if you can't think of what to do with this, maybe think about what we could do with this. And you say, well, I mean, I, I don't know any of the values though. So I don't know, well, what is it? What situation are we in? They've given us a clue. It's a situation that you're in. I would call it fraction plus fraction. Have you ever been in a situation where you had fraction plus fraction before? Well, yeah, when I first learned about them, we would combine them into one fraction, but I don't see how that's going to help us now because I don't know what they are. Okay, right. Yeah, don't turn that little voice in your mind out that says this is not going to help you. You are fumbling in the dark. You don't know what you're doing. Then do something. Change anything about the appearance of what they give you. That's another critical thought on the test. Change or manipulate the stimulus they put in front of you. So in this way, the only thing we could really do, we could try to solve this in terms of A or B or something like that, but that's gonna get just more complicated because you don't know what you're doing with it. You would need a second equation to plug it into, and this is not an equation, it's an expression. So instead just go, well, I don't think it's gonna work, it probably won't, but I have been in a situation where I've seen fractions plus fractions and I did add those fractions. Okay, now we are going to introduce a speed tactic here. You do want to have as many speed tactics at your disposal as you can. Anytime you're in the situation, fraction plus fraction, 
And as long as B and D have no common divisors, although it still works if they do, one of the better techniques is to bring the D up to the A, kind of like cross multiplying, drop the sine plus the B up to the C, put it right here, and then multiply the denominators B and D. That's exactly what it will come out to be. And it's just the same thing as if you had done uh, multiply the left side by D over D to create common denominator and the right side by B over B. So you'll see the common denominator is DB now, and it would look exactly the same. It's just that that takes more work and every second counts on the task. So we come over here, you can fly right through it. B plus A over AB. Gosh, that looks familiar. And that those are those things. In fact, I can just grab this and divide and the result is four and you're done. Don't hesitate if you don't know what to do and you see anything that you can do. Pull that thread, see what happens, go around the corner. You never know. You might find yourself at the end of the problem. So don't forget that technique on the test. I'll try to make some more videos like this in the run-up to these 2023 AMC 10 and 12 contests. That's it for today. I will catch you in the next one.